So the way that we're going to approach this is um, the first week or so, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more guided, slow setup instructions for everything that we do, just so that there's repetition. Uh, there's a chance for everyone to stop and ask questions if they have them, or if you have a problem, I'll have you share your screen. We'll go through setup together. Uh, that is expected in the first week. There will be some hiccups. Um, those of you that are coming into this course with a little bit of previous experience and know how terminals work already, I don't want you to think that the entire course is going to be a snail's pace like this. Uh, it will pick up, I promise. It just, we got to get everybody on the same page. So if you're one of those people that's coming in and has absolutely no idea what a file system is on a computer, that's okay. You are safe. This is a safe space. It will take care of you. We'll show you what you're doing. That's kind of what this first lesson is going to be, is what the terminal is, uh, how we use the terminal for things. And then um, a little bit later this afternoon, we'll talk about Git and GitHub. And those are the two things that you're going to need to get your first lab done tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by going to our calendar. So we're going to look at the calendar. You'll see that after lunch, and again, these times are listed in central for me because I'm in Texas. So um, I have central time zones. They should be current for whatever time zone you are in. Um, we, we don't have any West Coasters, do we? We have a couple, don't we? I'm sorry. Who's in Pacific time? Nobody in Pacific time. Cool. Do we have any mountain time? Central time. Okay. We're seriously all central and eastern? Man. This is this is like the dream cohort. Y'all are shaping up to be the best one ever. Cool. All right. Um, let's go into intro to the terminal. Okay. This is our first uh first lesson. Uh we're going to use the terminal command line interface or CLI to navigate and manipulate the file system. Okay, we're going to click on this and that will take us to intro to the terminal. And this is gonna be our lesson, okay? Um, just kind of an intro to how we're gonna do this. Um, typically, the setup that I follow on my screen is kind of what you want on your screen. Uh, this can be a little awkward when you're first starting online learning environments anywhere. Like what do you have where as far as screen real estate and how to set things up? What I would recommend doing is you should ideally all have at least a monitor to hook up to your laptop or your computer. Two screens is better than one. So if you're using a laptop, having a screen plugged into it is ideal, um, but, you can use as many screens realistically as you want. Uh, Sierra? I am so sorry. So you went to, I'm on the GA page, but where did you find that terminal login? I'm sure. I so what we did is we went to the calendar. Oh, calendar. Okay. Yep. And right after lunch on the calendar is intro to the terminal. So this is the hub for the, the calendar is essentially going to be the jumping off point for all of our lessons moving forward. Yep. No, thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Yep. Not a problem. So what I would recommend doing when you're following along is try to use the same setup that I use, at least to get started with it. And then if you feel like putting me on a different screen as I'm lecturing is beneficial to you, then do that. You can set things up however you want realistically, but I would have it so that at a bare minimum, you have the lesson content on one half of your screen and the code editor or the terminal in this case on the other half of your screen so that you've got everything essentially set up the same way that I do. It's going to be easier for you to do that and follow along uh, because your screen will easily match or most closely match what I have set up on mine. Uh, one of the utilities that we suggest you install is Rectangle for Mac users, or if you're using Windows, Power Tools is really the best way to do it. Um, and what that lets you do is uh, see if I can remember the command here. This lets you set things up so that actually, I think I'm going to go with this one. Uh, I can split my screen up into two different places and I can drag things into different places very easily. Okay. Rectangle does the same thing. There's a list of shortcuts, shows you how to use it and the instructions, and you can click on the little Mac icon wherever it is, and it gives you the option of doing that. But Power Tools is how you do that on Windows, or Power Toys. 
Um, and having the ability to easily snap things to different parts of your screen is a huge, huge, huge deal. What you don't want to do when you're setting things up is have to be like, okay, well, I got this window and then I got this window, but I want this window to take up like maybe, I don't know, a third of my screen. So I'll kind of put it here and maybe, you know, I'll drag it and you just, you just want the shortcuts, learn how to use your shortcuts. Okay. This is one of those really important things that if you're doing an interview, especially online and you're sharing your screen and you're fumbling around with your windows, the people that are interviewing you are going to look at you like, what the hell is this person doing? Like they don't know how to use their computer. Um, being able to snap things to those places by using either keyboard shortcuts or by clicking and dragging uh, is just a really, really small thing that will go a long way in your career as developers. Uh, and using screen real estate effectively is also really important, right? If you have a screen, use the parts of your screen that you're using so that you don't have wasted space, okay? Um, but anyway, I would try to mimic what I do on my screen as closely as possible for when we, we do stuff like this in lessons. And you'll kind of get a feel for why as we go. Uh, the other thing I'll say is that if at any point um, you need me to zoom in on anything, uh, just ask, just raise your hand and ask me to do that. Uh, lesson content is, I will try to have it as big as I can on my screen, but within a reasonable size, you're going to have that open. You should have Notion open somewhere so that you can follow along. So um, make sure you've all got Notion open and you're here in this terminal lecture along with me. And then in a minute, we're going to open the terminal and I'll show you how we actually use that here, okay? So what is the terminal, okay? The terminal is a developer's choice for entering commands and navigating a file system, okay? What's a file system? It's how things are stored on your computers, okay? Um, you know, back in the day when computers first came around, you had to know how to do this because this was the only way to open files. Uh, you know, back before Windows even existed or any graphical user interfaces like operating systems, you'd have to load, technically they still had operating systems, but you'd have to do everything from a command line, okay? There was no double click because there wasn't a mouse, right? That doesn't, it didn't exist. It was a completely different experience on a computer than it is nowadays. Um, but this thing that we use to enter commands is still here. It still exists and we still use it as developers. Um, the terminal allows us uh, access to what's called a shell. And the default shell on your machines uh, is Bash. And because you've gone through InstallFest, uh, or actually because Mac has updated it, Apple's updated it, you're not actually using Z shell, which is a little bit more current. Uh, as InstallFest, we configured your system to use Z shell regardless of whatever operating system that you are using. Um, so everyone in the course will be using the same shell in their terminal, which is called Z shell. Um, you can typically use those words interchangeably, terminal and shell. Um, sometimes you'll see it referred to as bash in older things because bash is a version of that shell. Um, but those words are pretty interchangeable. So what we're going to do is we're going to all open our terminal. And if you're using Windows, uh, you can use command or hit the Windows button and just type the word terminal. Uh, or you can, if you're doing it right, pin it to your start bar because you're going to be using this a lot. If you're using a Mac, you can use command and space to open your search, search light, spotlight, whatever it's called. Uh, and then you search for terminal and then you can open that up. And you should see, you, you can ignore that if you're using Windows, you should see something that looks like this. I'm going to zoom in here so I can, we can all see it a little bit better. And I'm going to move this to this half of my screen. So we have the lesson and we have the terminal. Okay. You may have noticed during install fest that you installed Oh My Zosh, uh, which is an extensible framework that adds some cool functionality to the shell. So without Oh My Zosh, the shell would look a little bit different than what you see here. Uh, and I'm sure you noticed as you installed it that things look pretty once you eventually got to that point in install fest. Um, oh my Zosh installs some pretty cool features into the shell that makes working in the terminal a lot more uh, user friendly. Uh, and a lot of the features you're not really going to see until we actually get to them. 
uh, but things like working with a GitHub repository or Git repository rather, um, it's a lot easier to kind of see the status of what is going on inside of your Git repository because of the way that this shell has been configured. You're going to get to see that when we get there. But the long and short of what this does, this terminal, is it provides a text-based interface where we can enter commands and receive output. Okay, that's what the terminal does. The shell is the actual interpreter. It's what executes those commands. So the terminal is where we enter commands that are processed by the shell. Okay, the terminal allows us to interact with a shell. So this is one of those little book things that gives us some more uh, definitions of terms as we move forward. Okay. So the way that you've configured this on your machine uh, or and set this up is such that you have, um, this is known as what's called the home directory, okay? This is different than what you would see a home directory on, like if you went home on to your desktop, this isn't a desktop, okay? This is a little bit different than that. This is what's known as the home directory on your machine. And if you want to see what path you are currently at, on your machine, you can type this PWD, that stands for print working directory, okay? And you'll see that my home directory is slash home slash bmanly, okay? This isn't necessarily the root directory of my computer. Like there are directories behind this up on that hierarchy of, of folders, so to speak, okay? When I say directory, that word can be interchangeable with folder because that's how a lot of people think of directories is just a folder where you put stuff. But that's where directories are. Directories are places on your computer that you are able to put files or other directories. And that's how a file system works on your machine, is a file system is just a series of directories and files that make up everything that runs on your computer. Okay. So right now we're in this home directory. If I want to change to another directory, I have to use a command to do that. And I use the cd command or change directory. Okay, so by typing cd tilde, that takes me to the home directory. I am changing directory to tilde, which is what we use here for home, okay? Or if I just type cd, it does the same thing. It takes me to my home directory, okay? When you're navigating the file system, there are a couple really important commands that you want to learn how to use. One of them is that. How do I go back to the home directory? How do I get back home? And to do that, CD is your magic. Okay, here are some more of those shortcuts. Um, the tilde is the logged in user's home directory. Slash here is the root or the top level directory on the file system. Okay, so you don't need to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and demo this. If I do cd slash, you'll now see that the prompt has changed. I'm somewhere different. And if I pwd, print working directory, it just tells me slash. So this is the top level of my file system. Okay. Does anybody know what command I can use to list the contents of this directory and see what's in here? Shout it out. ls. ls. Okay. So if I type ls, it shows me all of the things that are in this directory, okay? This is everything on this, well, it's not on this actual computer because we're running WSL on this machine, but on your computers, if you're running a Mac, this is it. This is everything on your machine is somewhere in one of these directories, okay? You don't wanna be in here, okay? This is a dangerous place to be. You don't wanna mess with anything that's in your file system at this level, okay? All of the stuff we're going to do is going to be in this root directory. So let's go back over there and do cd tilde. Okay. The other way, so as you've just seen, I'm able to change directories by typing in the name of the directory that I want to type to okay, or that I want to navigate to. I just did that here. Uh, just to clear my screen, you can type the word clear and that will clear up your terminal. So it makes it a little bit easier to see stuff. What I'm going to do is demonstrate some of these other tools here, okay? Current directory is dot. The parent directory is dot dot, okay? 
So let's again use that ls command, and you'll see that I've got. Oh, there's my WoW private server. I forgot that was on there. Um, the all of the directories here are listed for what is in my home directory. So I've got this Anaconda, which is a Python thing. Uh, dishes, which I think is actually an SEI example. So let me get rid of that. Um, I've got some other stuff in here. Drawers, we're actually going to use that too. Let me get rid of that. Uh, and I've got this code directory. Okay, this code directory is where all of my code is going to be stored for this class. The last part of this lesson is going to be setting this directory up so that you're all good to go for your for the, the course. All of the code you write in the course is going to be in this code directory. Okay. But we need commands that allow us to move back and forth between these directories. Okay. And that's what these commands are going to be able to do. Okay. Dot means current directory. So if I type cd space dot, it shouldn't do anything. That means change directories to the current directory. It's not going to do anything. Okay. If I want to go back a directory and move up that the chain, I could type cd dot dot. And what that does is it moves me back one place in my directory structure. Okay. So you'll remember if I were to go uh, back to my root and I type print working directory, it shows me slash home slash be manly. If I were to go back one directory, what do you think I would see? Slash home? Let's try it. Go back a directory and I can type pwd and it says exactly that, home. So I've use that dot dot command to move back one directory. What happens if I want to go forward one directory now? If I want to go back into B Manly, I can see that B Manly is the only thing that's in this directory by using LS. So how would I go into B Manly? I would select it with that change directory command, CD, B Manly. Now I'm back home. Okay. How are we feeling so far? Whose minds are blown? Not quite, not quite there yet. Okay. These are some of the basic commands that you're going to be using when you're navigating a file structure on your machines. Okay. This dot dot will come into play, and the dot will come into play a lot more later. Because in certain files that we use in JavaScript, we're going to have to tell JavaScript, hey, I want you to access this file, and it's located back a directory in this folder, in this folder, in this folder. Like you're gonna have to give instructions to your code to be able to navigate the file structure by using commands like this. So that's why this stuff is important, okay? Um, <clears throat> some more vocab here. Home directory is the personal directory assigned to each user on a system. Typically it's under the home directory. So slash home slash username, which you saw. Um, it's the default location where specific config files, personal documents, and other data are stored. Okay. It's also the default working directory when you log into the terminal. That's the default. The default will take you home. Okay. The root directory is the top level directory. It's where all of the file system and directories exist for the entire operating system. Everything, everything on your computer will live in that root directory. Okay. Not if you're using WSL. WSL is a little bit different. Okay. That's just some basics. So as I showed you, you're able to do that LS and list the contents of a directory. Okay. One thing to note about that LS command is that it doesn't show hidden files. Okay. There are some files on your machine that are hidden by default. And what we can do if we want to see those is we can use this dash A. So what this dash A is, this is called a flag. And what it says is, show me all of the files in this current directory, not just the ones that aren't hidden. And you, you do that, you're, oh my God. Look at all that. There's a whole lot more there, right? Everything here that has a dot in front of it is a directory well, this is a directory because it's blue. Again, this is why oh my Zosh is important because it highlights these things appropriately. But you can see I've got a directory here that's hidden called NVM, a directory that has all my oh my Zosh settings. 
a, a file called profile. All of this stuff here is hidden inside of this root directory or inside of this home directory. Okay. It still exists when I do this ls normally up here, but you just can't see it because they're hidden. So if you need to access hidden files, you can see them by using this command. So what we're going to do to get everybody more familiar with terminal commands is we're going to make a directory called drawers, and we're going to put a series of drawers into a directory that will be symbolized by file or folders, right? And we're going to put different files inside of those drawers and move things between directory and directory. And that's how you're going to learn how the file system works. Okay. This can be a little confusing, especially if you haven't dealt with a file system before. If you're old school and used computers before Windows existed, like I did, this will feel a little bit more comfortable because this is how you had to use computers back in the day. Um, but it's just getting used to how the terminal works is a vital part of being a developer because you're going to be using it all the time. Okay. So I'm going to type clear, clean my screen up a little bit. And we're going to start by creating a directory called drawers. Okay. Now there's a couple different ways that I can do this. What I can do, the mkdir command is the one that we're going to use to create the directory. Okay. So I have two different options here. I can specify the exact path to the directory I want to create by typing mkdir tilde slash drawers. Okay. Did that work? I didn't see anything. How do I check to see if it worked? LS or? Yeah. LS. Drawers, cool, it worked. Okay, the other way that I could do that command, I'm gonna remove this real quick, is, and again, we'll do ls. I'll show you that I don't have a drawers directory here. If I wanna just create a directory inside of the directory I'm already in, I don't need to specify the slash and the tilde. I can just say mkdir drawers. And it works the same way because it knows that I'm in my home directory right now. The difference between these two things, this specifying this way, or if I were to do this, by the way, the up and down arrows, you can cycle through previously entered commands in your terminal. If you haven't learned that yet, that's chef's kiss, like delightful little secret for using the terminal. The difference between these two commands is what's called using, one is using the absolute path and one is using the full path, okay? Excuse me, full path and relative path. So this is the full or absolute path, okay? This shows from the home directory exactly where I need to go to make this directory. This is called a relative path, okay? This happens relative to where I am. And don't follow along on this part. Like, don't do this yourselves, but I'm just going to demonstrate something, right? So let's say I have another directory uh, called uh, food, and I want to create a directory inside of that food directory called waffles. Okay. If I want to make a directory inside of food called waffles, I can type mkdir tilde slash food slash waffles, okay? And I can list the contents of food, and it shows me that inside of food, I have waffles. The other thing that I could do, if I wanted to use the relative path, is I could CD into food. Now I'm inside of food, I can create that same waffles directory. In this case, I'll create one called tacos. And since I'm inside of that directory, I don't need to use that full or absolute path. I can use a relative path. Okay, That's the only difference between these two. 
for 90% of the code that we are going to write in this class, we're going to use this relative path. We're not going to need to use this absolute path. Okay? This is just easier to work with. When we eventually start getting to the point where we have complicated file systems set up for the applications that we build, you're not going to want to enter the full path because you're going to have some pretty complicated code, right? If I to show you an example of what a React app looks like, and don't let this break you, but um, like I've got all of these different files and folders in here, right? So inside of, uh, uh, it's just a, yeah, this is an old one that I built. Inside of views, I have a directory called partials. So if it, I'm inside of this crazy path here, this directory structure, I'm inside of home, inside of bmanly, inside of bird bucks tracker, inside of views, inside of partials. I would, if I want to create a directory in here, I don't want to have to type all of this. That would be silly, right? If I want to make a directory inside of here called stuff, I would just want to cre create that by typing mkdir stuff, okay? That makes my directory. I don't want to have to type mkdir tilde slash home slash bmanly slash bird bucks tracker slash view slash partials. That's, no, okay? This is why these relative paths are important. Okay. If I want to move back out of this directory, now that I'm done screwing around here, I can use cd dot dot to go back one directory every single time. I could have just used cd as well to get me back home. I was just demonstrating this before we dive into doing it ourselves here in the lecture. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? Perfectly okay. If you have questions, please ask them. Cool. All right. So let's make that drawers directory. Did I left that there? Yeah, cool. We have our drawers directory. Okay. What we want to do is we want to change directories into that so that we can add some more drawers and put some clothes inside of them. The clothes that we're going to use are just files that mean absolutely nothing. They're just random file names that we're going to use for this example. They're not actually going to be files that we can run by doing anything. Okay. What I'm going to show you next is the absolute most important shortcut you will ever learn as a developer. Hands down, bar none, the most important one ever. And it's called tab auto completion. Okay. As developers, one of the most common mistakes you're going to make are spelling mistakes. You'll spell the name of a file wrong. You'll spell the name of a directory wrong. You'll spell something wrong. And the way that our computers are set up, our developer environments are set up, are there are shortcuts that we can use to prevent those mistakes. And one of the biggest ones is tab autocompletion. Okay. If I type CD and just type the word D or the letter D, and I hit tab, my computer knows, hey, you only have one directory called drawers. So when you hit tab, it just completes that for you. Okay. There's no way I can misspell that. Okay. One of the most important tricks to doing that is that tab autocomplete. By typing tab after just typing in, you can either do D or you can type DR and see now I've got a couple different options here. That's because I didn't type CD in front of it. Oh my God. So if I take CD DRA and hit tab, it gives me drawers. Same thing if I just hit D and hit tab. Okay. What happens if I have multiple directories that sound like that? Say I have I have uh, drivers. Real quick, Ben. Um, mm -hmm. Mine doesn't do that when I hit tab. Is there something I'm doing wrong if it looks exactly like yours? Like if I put the tilde and I, I added the drawer as well and I put DRA, it doesn't, it just type, like gives me like a beep. Type LS for me and see if it shows drawers as a directory. Uh, yes. 
Well, Let's see your screen. Let's see. I think I'm in the. Yeah. Am I am I able to share my screen? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. 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 You may have to give it permission to do that the first time you share your screen. So. Got it. Okay, so I think it said I'd have to quit and reopen it. Um, I guess we'll I'll wait for you. Okay. Let me... Everyone's going to have to do this at some point. So. so I just leave the meeting and come back? Yeah, just come on back. Cool. I'm having that same problem, too, though, with the tab. Okay. When I hit tab, I just get a boop sound, and I don't, nothing happens. Okay. We'll check it out uh, when he comes back. If you want to attempt to share your screen too, you could do that. Just try to share oh, your screen. On, I'm on two computers. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. Hold tight and we'll see if it works with uh, with his issue. Cool. Okay. Let's try this again. Awesome. Okay. okay. So what your issue is, is it, go ahead and type LS for me. Mm -hmm. You are currently in your drawers directory. And the reason it, it's harder for you to see that is because you're not, you don't have uh, oh my Zosh installed yet. So once you go through install uh, fest, this will look better, but go ahead and type PWD. Oh, I mean, you did that right here. And what you see is that you're already inside of your drawers directory. Okay. So, so I, how how would you go back one directory? It would be cd uh, dot dot, right? Perfect. Now go ahead and do cd space d and hit tab, and I bet you it works. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Cool. Once you install uh, uh, oh my Zosh, all of these problems will go away because you'll be able to visualize where you're... I'm glad you shared your screen because this is an example of why we use oh my Zosh, because trying yeah, to navigate this is a pain in the ass right gotcha okay cool. i'll definitely do that tonight thank you sweet thank you did that fix your issue andrew um no because i mean when i hit i hit cd mm -hmm. and now i'm back and then i hit d and i hit tab and still just boop Okay. Um, and then, but then I, 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 so I've tried it a few times now, and one of the times it brought up everything that starts with D. Um, but Did you type of, CD space and then D? CD space. Yeah, it's still doing that. Okay. Um, oh, I had the same issue where it kind of showed everything that started with D. If you just keep pressing tab, eventually it'll get to the. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's happening. Okay. Or if you do DR, you can just to specify the word a bit more. Right. Yeah. That uh, is actually the next thing I was going to demonstrate here. So I made another directory called drivers just to demonstrate that if I want to change directory now into drawers and I type D, it's going to bring up, it automatically start with DR because it knows that the only two directories in here are drawers and drivers. And when I hit tab again, it does exactly what you're experiencing. It's going to show a list of all of the directories that start with those two things. And if I hit tab, I can go back between the ones that I want and I can hit enter to select that drawers and hit enter to go inside of it. And so that's how... To make it dark, to, uh, the command shift L isn't working for me when it comes to terminal. Did you change it to homebrew? Um, it seemed like the only dark option when I went to settings. You're talking about the terminal? Yeah. Um, I am not using homebrew because I'm on Windows, but- um, uh, When you go to settings for terminal, it, it gives you uh, preferences. Um, it, it gives you options to make it look dark. Um, it has basic grass, homebrew, man page, novel, ocean, pro, red sand, silver, aerogel, and solid colors. Did you use that? Because control shift L or command shift L didn't work. 
Uh, Command Shift L is just for Notion. I don't know how to change the color of your terminal on a Mac, but I am using Homebrew. I use Pro, and they both okay. have a black background. Okay. Aaliyah, we can hop in a breakout room later today, and I'll try to figure it out with you if you cool. want that. Okay. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would just leave it as is for right now. But yeah, cool. Good question, Andrew. Yeah, um, when I'm putting in cd dot dot into my terminal, it is saying the command is not found. cd space dot dot or cd dot dot? Uh, you to... haven't finished install fest, have you yet, Andrew? Mm -hmm. No, I have not. You might just need to follow along with Ben and like watch him. There is there a space? A... But cd would work anywhere, whether he's done install fest or not. Oh. Did you put a space between them? I bet you you didn't. Yeah, space is super important. Yeah, that'll do it. If you're going to try it like this, it's going to say command not found. You got yep. to put that space. That was it. Cool. Awesome. All right. So we're all in. We're all inside of our drawers directory, right? Everybody good on that? All right. Uh, this again, this repeatable pattern used properly, tab autocomplete can completely eliminate all of your spelling errors when you're typing something out, okay? Um, we're gonna be using that in VS Code pretty much every day for the rest of this course. And if you're not using autocomplete, you are doing it wrong, okay? Most important shortcut ever. If this is not a joke. This will save you hours of time typing things, okay? All right, so we've created a directory. Let's create some files to put inside of here, okay? But before we do that, we need to organize those files. So we're gonna create a socks directory. And inside of socks, we're gonna put some dress socks, okay? Again, I know this, this is creating a file. This file is not going to do anything. It's just a demonstration of how the file system works, okay? I, I understand that .socks is not a valid file extension, okay? So, to use a touch command, that will create an empty file. So let's go ahead and make a new directory called socks inside of drawers. Okay, I can check, make sure it's there by typing ls. And we're gonna cd into it. So I can do cd space. I'm just gonna use s and hit tab for autocomplete. And inside of that directory, I want to create a file or touch a file called dress dot socks. Now you'll see if we do an ls that I have a file called address dot socks. Okay. MKDIR is the file that your command that you use to create a directory. Touch is the command that you use to create a file. Okay. So what I'd like y'all to do is I want to make sure, I want you to go through and make sure that you've got three directories. You should have a PJs directory, you should have a more socks directory, and you should have a more PJs directory, okay? So inside of your drawers, I want you to have a total of four directories. PJs, more socks, more PJs, and socks, okay? Then Inside of your PJs directory, you should have a file named warm PJs. And then inside of your more socks directory, I want you to create a file called favorite.socks. Okay. I'm going to give you five minutes to knock that out. We'll come back. I'll walk through it. This is how the process is going to go for these little you do exercises. So you're going to do them on your own. And then I'll give you time to do them. I'll put some fun, relaxing music on in the background while you do that. And then when the time is up, I will go through and do all of the exercises so that you have a, an example of how they're done. Or sometimes I'll have one of you share your screen and have us walk you through it or have you walk us through what you did. Okay. So I'm gonna give you five minutes. All right. So the first thing I asked you to do is create these directories, PJs, more socks, more PJs, okay? Right now we're in the socks directory. So if I wanted to create these directories from here, 
I could do that. I'll do the first one like that, and then I'll navigate back and use relative paths for the other two, okay? Because I'm going to show you another cool trick when we get there. So to do this, I can type mkdir, and I can use that absolute path. Again, I can use autocomplete there too and say, I want to create PJs, okay? It doesn't tell me whether it was successful or not. Well, it doesn't say whether it wasn't successful. So if I do an LS of drawers, I can see that I now have PJs and socks there. I haven't left the socks directory. I've done all of this from there. Okay. The other option that you've got, again, is to go back into the drawers directory with that CD dot dot to navigate back one file directory. And then I can create the other two by doing this. I can type MKDIR. I can type more socks. And a trick is that if I don't want to have to enter MKDIR more socks and then hit enter and then hit MKDIR, you can use multiple commands or create multiple directories just simply by putting a space between them. So I'm going to do MKDIR more socks, more PJs. And what that does is creates two directories with one MKDIR command. Just need to put a space between them. Okay. The next thing I need to do, and I'm going to follow the same process I just did for the drawers with this one, is I need to create two files. I'll create the first one using an absolute full path, and I'll create the second one using a relative path. So the first file I'm going to create is warm.pjs inside of my pjs directory. Okay. So I can touch. And inside of PJs, I want to create a file called warm.pjs. And if I want to look at that, I can type ls PJs. And that shows I have warm PJs in there. The other way that you can do this is, again, by navigating into that directory and then creating the file there. Okay. I can go into more socks. And I can touch favorite.socks. And it's right there. Okay. Did anybody have any problems with that or get stuck somewhere? Or want help getting that done? We're going to, when we get done with this lesson, we're going to delete this directory. So it's, it's just practice. But like now's the time to ask if you have questions on this stuff. Um, I guess I have. I just have a question based on format. Um, is it a common practice to have periods for like I for, for files and hyphens for directories? Or is so that... that's a great question. The you can't use a period for the name of a directory. That won't work. Um, okay. The reason that we're using periods here is like realistically. Dot socks is a stupid name for a file, right? Because it yeah. doesn't do anything. But if you were creating a text file, right? Uh, create, wow, touch like secrets dot text, right? That's what that would look like. So that's what okay. that dot means. The dot means a file extension. That's dot socks. It's, it's not a thing. It's not going to open on. There's not a program that's going to run a dot socks file. This is just an example. So cool. Great question but your directory should have hyphen names in them. One thing you absolutely do not want to do is create a directory like this. Like uh, it's actually not even possible to do this in the terminal because it'll create multiple directories, but don't create directories with spaces in their names. Like if you have the option to save something on your machine or you know, you're creating something in VS Code, do not put a space in the name of that because it's gonna break when you try to link to it using JavaScript. So great point. Uh, Nicholas. When you're doing absolute to create the warm PJs, mm -hmm. absolute is also based on where you are in the terminal. So I noticed you didn't have to write drawers. You didn't have to go back, right? Technically, that's actually a relative path. It's still, it's relative to where I currently am. The absolute path for that would have been slash uh, drawers slash PJs. So yeah. 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 Okay. You just said it was absolute. So I was like, does that? I was, I was 100% wrong. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> you're good. 
please call me out on stuff like that. If you notice a discrepancy, like that was that was misspoke when I said that. That was absolutely a relative path. Cool. Sierra? Okay, so I think my, I think I figured it out. Um, Because I was trying to figure out how to put warm PJs within the PJs. And I don't know if I did it correctly, but. Uh, do you want to try sharing your screen? Sure. And I am, just forewarning, I don't have my sucker monitor yet because my adapter broke and I apologize. So I am on one screen for today. It's uh, all good. Okay. Because it looks very cluttered and I apologize. <laughs> it's all good. I don't expect you all to have like perfectly set up screens for like a week or so. Like you're going to learn all this stuff as you go. And if we get into unit two and you still have stuff all over the place, I will call you out on it. But none of you are going to no, do that by fine. then. So. Uh, I don't even know if I can figure it You might out. have to give it permission to do that. You'll probably have to quit and reload Zoom. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I think I do. Cool. All right. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. But I did figure it out. I just didn't know if I did it correctly is what I'm trying to figure out. So it, to double check your <laughs> work, how do you do that? Um, I mean, in this case, I would just use an LS. So, for example, if you want to check to see if you have P, uh, the warm PJs, Mm -hmm. If you go back into your drawers directory, you could do ls pjs, or you could cd into pjs and do ls. Both of those would be an acceptable way to see what you've done. All right, let me go out and go back in, but I think I already did it, so I will double check my work here in a second. Okay, I'll tell you what, if it's not correct, we can uh, debug it over break, because I'm going to send you all on break here in a minute after we get done with this next command. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Cool. Yep. Cool. Okay, so let's get back into drawers. Wait for her to come back. How do you clear the terminal? Type the word clear. You type it? Yep. Type it. If you type the word clear, it'll clear your terminal for you. So the last two steps here, uh, or not the last two steps, but um, as far as our directory structure goes here, we're going to delete some files and we're going to delete some directories, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove our dress socks. So to do that, I need to go into my uh, socks directory and I can rm to remove a file. So we'll cd into socks, ls, make sure it's there. And I can RM, and again, with autocomplete, I just have to type the first letter of the file, and it's going to know which one I want. And that RM command will remove that file. Okay. Very important piece of information here. RM is not going to ask you, hey, do you want to delete this file? Or is it okay if I delete this file? It's not going to ask you for permission. If you type rm with a file name, it's just going to delete it. That file's gone. It's not in a trash can somewhere. It's not in special uh, operating system limbo. It is gone. It is deleted. Okay. So be very careful when you're deleting things with that. The other thing that you could do, this is just like a little added bonus, is if you wanted to delete all of the files that have a certain extension, you could use star.socks. So for example, if I had... Uh, my.socks, dress.socks, uh, I don't know, uh, cool.socks, right? I've got three different sock files. If I want to delete all of those, I can do rm star.socks, and that will delete all of those files using that, that uh, wildcard extension, okay, for wildcard character. Does that work the other way around? So, like, if it's, like, dress.socks, dress.pants, and I do remove dress dot wildcard. Does that remove all? Like, does it work in kind of like the opposite position? I guess. I what don't I mean believe to say. so. But let's. I mean, let's try it. Okay. Well, I can do. Uh, let's do the touch. Uh, my dot socks. My dot pants. My dot shirt. And let's do rm. I don't think this will work. But eh, look at that! It did. There might be more going on there than I think. 
Let's try this. Oh, son of a bitch. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it works that way too. You learn something new every day. Cool. So at last cohort, it was, uh, you can enter a specific, there's a number associated with every terminal command. And one of my students was like, did you know you could do this? I was like, I have no idea. Yeah, it's always good, to, good stuff when you learn something new like that. We can also delete directories, okay? RM is used to delete a file. We can delete a directory by using this RM minus RF command, okay? This is one of the most dangerous commands to enter on your computer manually in the terminal, because if you type this the wrong way, it will start deleting all of the files on your computer. Like if you were to add, like, make sure there's no cats near your keyboard or like, small children or anything that could accidentally hit your enter key. Because if you type just this that I've got highlighted here and hit enter, it's gonna start deleting your file system, okay? That would be bad. That would be very bad, okay? Don't ever, ever do that. In fact, I would never even type this out on my own. I would always type an app or a relative path, never type an absolute path when you're using this. Because if you just bump your computer keyboard, you're screwed essentially. Don't, don't do that, okay? So let's go back a directory. I wanna delete my PJs directory. So what I can do is I can type rm minus rf PJs. And that has deleted my PJs directory, okay? The other option, if you don't have files inside of a directory and you want to delete it, you can use that rmdir. But if there's any files inside of it, it's not going to work. So that's why that rm minus rf works. Okay. The rf flags run the rm command recursively and forces the deletion of directories. Okay. So that will delete the directory and everything within it. Okay. We're not gonna type that very often. Ben, if we put these directories in let's say the wrong folder, how would we move the directories? I see there's an MV thing when I Googled it, but then there was um, dash F, dash I, and et cetera. Which one would be the correct one to use? You would use, um, it, MV is not necessarily what you will want to use in that situation. If you're dealing okay. with a directory, you'd want to use CP, which actually is one of the level ups down here, oh, okay. the MV command and the CP command. So you can check this out. Uh, moving, you can rename files. There's a bunch of really cool stuff in here about that. So I would direct you to that if you have questions on it. But okay. yeah. Cool. Great question. Okay. Um, what we're going to do next, uh, there's some little shortcuts here. Um, if you want to skip words back and forth in the terminal, like if you have something that looks like this, you can do control and left arrow to move between things, which is kind of handy. Um, if you want to skip to the beginning of a line, you can do control or command A or E. Actually, I don't think command. I think it's just control. Uh, on both Windows and Mac. Uh, are those shortcuts useful? Yeah. Are they things you need to memorize because they're life-changing? Probably not. Uh, I don't use those ever, um, but they're kind of handy if you know them. Um, control L or uh, clear is also a really handy one. I would definitely know how to do that. Okay. So we have another you do, and this is setting up your code directory for the rest of the course. So this is going to set up a directory that you store all of your files in for the rest of the course. Okay, this is really important. So what I want everyone to do is I want you to type CD enter and make sure that you see this little tilde here for home directory. Then just follow these instructions and make all of these directories. Okay. If you get stuck on doing this, there's a one command down here that will do literally four commands. We'll do everything you need to do, but I want you to practice this. Okay. I'm going to have you do that. 
and then uh, we'll take a break. Mm, I'm going to give you, how about 12 minutes? Yeah, 12 minutes. So 15 past, we'll come back. I keep going here. So I'm going to go through and do the same process with y'all. Um, all right, got a little head there. So inside of my, I already have a code directory. Inside of that, I do not have an SEI directory. So I'm going to make directory SEI, CD into it. And then inside of that, I need the following directories. Okay. So I need one for assessments, labs, lectures, projects, repos, code alongs, sandbox, and temp. Okay. I'm not going to type all that out. I'm just going to hit copy, paste. And that does that for me. Okay. The reason that we have these assessments will live in this directory. Your labs, all of the labs you're going to do are going to live in this labs directory. Your lectures will go in the lectures directory. Projects will go in the projects directory. Repos. Sometimes you want to pull something from GitHub that's not necessarily your own, but you don't necessarily need it or want to save it. You can put that in a repos directory. Is that one needed? Probably not. I wouldn't do that. I would just keep it in like a temp directory or something like that. Code alongs for when we do activities that use supplemental code alongs. So this will be more than just a regular lecture. The typically code alongs will go for like a couple of days. So you can put that there. If you put a lecture in a lectures or a code along in a lectures, does it matter? No, this is just a way to keep things organized. Okay. Sandbox. If you're playing with a new library or you're just testing something out, you know, you're probably going to delete later and just kind of want to screw around with it. Throw it in a sandbox directory. Okay. If you're doing something that you know you're definitely going to get rid of later and just need it for temporary purposes, put it in a temp directory. Okay. You shouldn't put anything in a temp directory that you are not 100% okay with getting rid of. Because if and when you need space on your machine, the fastest way to do that is to say, hey, I've got this directory of stuff. I can just delete real quick. Give me some more space on my computer. Okay. The stuff that we build in this unit is not going to take up a lot of space. These files are tiny. Like we're not even talking about megabytes worth of size here. Like this is kilobyte territory with how much space this stuff takes up. But when we start getting into Unit two, you're probably looking at a 100, 150, maybe 200 megabytes per project that we build. Okay. React, that goes up to like 350. Now, depending on what we use, we might use Vite, which will be less than that. But you're going to use space up and having the ability to wipe stuff easily is handy. So use that for what it's worth. Okay. There's a level up here that's got some uh, terminal Mac cheat sheet stuff. Lin Linux, Linux, wow, Linux. We don't have any Linux users in this class, do we? You're all on uh, Windows, right? Yes? Okay, good. Um, uh, if you're using Windows, you can just replace command with control for most of those things. And it's a great little list of shortcuts. Okay. Oh my gosh, syntax highlighting is set up here. Uh, there's instructions for that. Tree is uh, what Matt was talking about earlier. This is, don't do this right now, but if, if you want later, um, you can install this tree command. And what this does is, uh, uh, let's go to, if I do tree here, that was probably the wrong place to do that. What it's doing is it's listing out every single directory and subdirectory of every single thing in that file or in that folder, which I'm realizing now had a bunch of React projects in it. So, um, but you can see here, that's a list of thousands and thousands and thousands of files. Like they're probably two, 300,000 files it just listed through uh, because of all the different React projects. So, um, yeah, good stuff. So this is the typical directory structure of what one of your unit two project or one unit one projects would look like. Okay, this is actually from Harrison's project. I was helping him with something. So you can see you're going to have a directory that holds your project. You're going to have an index.html. You're going to have a JavaScript directory that holds your JavaScript file. You're going to have a CSS directory that holds your CSS file. You're going to have a readme 
And if you have any pictures or assets or sound files, they're going to live in a directory like this. Okay. So this is what a typical unit one project directory structure will look like using tree. Okay. Something a little bit more complicated. I'm not going to show you that yet, but unit one, we're dealing with a couple files, like five or six files tops. Okay. Realistically, you just need three. Okay. Unit two, we're talking about dozens of files. Okay. So the level of complexity is going to scale pretty quickly when we get there. That's why this directory stuff is important because if you have dozens of files and they're not organized properly, you're not going to be happy when we get there. Okay. Um, do I have anything from... You can see what the directory structure looks like for unit two. Right. This is an app we're going to build together. You're going to have a, a bin directory, a config directory. Like these are all directories that are going to have different files in them. Okay. And this, you're going to have to be able to manage all of this directories within directories within directories. That's why this is important. Learning how to create this and learning how to navigate that file structure is how you're going to learn how to eventually piece all this stuff together and keep your code organized. Cool. All right. So there's some level up stuff in here you should check out. Extra bonus stuff. Not everything in the level up sections is like bonus. Like it's nice to know, but not required to be able to pass this class successfully. Okay. It's handy information, but not required information. Okay. That was your intro to the terminal. We have any questions on terminal stuff? How do, you, how do you how do you get um, the nighttime um, look, you know, instead of uh, the dark mode but... on Notion? Um, on on, no, I got it on Notion. How do you do it on a terminal? Um, I think we're investigating that. I don't know how to do it on a Mac, but Beryl's okay. going to help think, out with that. I think I have a solution because um, I, I, I thought about this too during the lunch. And I think it's over in the system preferences. If you just yeah. switch it over to dark mode, um, yeah, to do with your PC and how you set or your laptop. Yeah, laptop. yeah. So, cool. Because um, it, it's done system wide, not just on terminal. There you go. Cool. Awesome. Um, let's. What else do we have? We have. Get in GitHub. Let's. Take a short break, take four more minutes and we'll come back at uh, the bottom of the hour and we'll do Git and GitHub. That way, if you didn't get a break earlier, you can have a quick one. 